Thank you all for coming to uh, hear the Soul Gold story and special thanks to Red Cloud for putting on this uh, fantastic forum. We've been here a few years now and certainly helping to give us uh, some really good coverage. I'm going to be telling you a story about the emergence of a copper gold major. It's, uh, it's early days for us but we do have as our objective to become a real force in uh, copper and associated gold mining uh, in the newly emerging mining nation of Ecuador. That presents us with uh, a great growth platform and uh, something which we're working interactively with the Ecuadorian government to um, uh, build this uh, great industry in Ecuador and of course uh, deliver some great returns for Sol Gold shareholders. We started this company off in the Southwest Pacific in uh, 1997 under a different incarnation and we learned a lot about porphyries, horrible operating environments and um, difficult governments there and uh, decided in 2011 to move to one of those very dependable theatres in the Eastern Pacific, the Andean Copper Belt and uh, that was as a result of some uh, great direction from our uh, technical uh, expert and director uh, Dr. Steve Garwin. And uh, that has led to the discovery now of the Alpala ore body and we followed that up with a first mover advantage that we applied all over Ecuador, uh, giving us this fantastic pipeline on which we will um, surely prosecute the aim of becoming a copper gold major. So uh, read that in a hurry. Um, it's basically telling you that you've got to be careful with companies like Solgold, but um, don't be too careful or you'll miss out. So we have uh, in our, uh, our first uh, five or six years of operations in uh, Ecuador discovered uh, what we believe is one of the best uh, undeveloped copper gold ore bodies in the world and certainly a lot of detailed independent research shows that uh, as well. Uh, we followed that up with the first mover advantage, pegging likely porphyry locations all through uh, Ecuador. We have uh, some 3,200 square kilometres under application and it's a, a very supportive jurisdiction. They are building an industry which they see is going to really repair the economy of their uh, small nation. We found that uh, certainly the majors, particularly BHP and Newcrest, have really endorsed what we've discovered there and they certainly like the exploration package too. So um, it's our intention to build Sol Gold uh, independently and uh, to do that we're looking at uh, a conditional total project financing package of 2.7 billion which our newly appointed head of uh, corporate and project finance, Ingo Hofmeyer, is making some very impressive progress on. We have in mineral resource estimate number two to find 23 million ounces of gold and nearly 11 million tonnes of copper. Uh, that's over $110 billion worth of uh, metal in the ground along with 100 and, um, about 100 million ounces of silver as well. The PEA which we put out last May shows about a 27% IRR and NPV of about 4.4 billion which compares spectacularly to our current market cap of about 450 million uh, US. The, uh, uh, the project has uh, all sorts of upside in terms of lower royalty rates, more effective tax treatment and uh, improved recoveries and lower operating costs as we look at uh, all sorts of operating advantages that the location provides us with such as generating our own electricity. So why did we come to uh, the Andean copper belt was put simply it covers about half of the world's copper production and resources and you can see there that in the Eocene and Miocene belts particularly there are some monsters that are uh, family names amongst the uh, mining industry uh, such as Chuki, Kamada, El Teniente, Escondida and we find that our palace sits in that Eocene belt it's geologically very similar to uh, northern Chile and that's why uh, that's why we're there. So a little bit about uh, Ecuador itself and uh, what we're finding here. The geology, as I mentioned, is very similar to northern Chile. In fact, if you superimpose the borders of Ecuador over northern Chile, you cover about 25% of the world's copper resources and production. The difference is that we own nearly all of um, the, the best projects as far as we're concerned. and We, we have 100% 
of uh, those projects, with the exception of Alpala, where we hold 85%. So, title is vital to exploration and mining company juniors. Uh, we have a lot of it, and we believe it's uh, it's the best stuff as well. So, why is it there? Well, it's basically because of the weather. The uh, the Chilean uh, terrain doesn't have any cloud, no rain, no soil, no vegetation cover, and you can see these things from space on Google Earth, uh, and the Incas have been kicking their toes on, uh, on gold and copper there for the last couple of thousand years. In Ecuador, it's very different, and while Ecuador was concentrating on oil and gas production and becoming an OPEC state, uh, the art of geophysical interpretation was being perfected in the southwest Pacific. And basically, we look for magnetite using airborne magnetics. Uh, magnetite forms as a result of um, high oxidation states in uh, subduction zones where you have thick oceanic plates subducting slowly, distilling slowly, and slowly moving all the juicy stuff like the copper, the gold, and the silver up into the top part of the system. The oxygen takes the iron out, concentrates those precious and base metals, and uh, precipitates magnetite, and that's what we use um, aeromagnetics for to detect it through these uh, cover areas, and it really makes our on-the-ground uh, geology more efficient. So we decided to go to the Alpala zone in the southern part of the Cascabel tenement, where we have on the left there strong depletion of manganese in the very altered rocks, um, high soil molybdenum, uh, signatures and also high copper zinc ratios in the centre parts of those systems. That plus the tiny little 50 metre outcrop that we found in Alpala Creek is why we drilled there first and that led uh, basically to the discovery of a, a monstrous iceberg underneath it uh, with that over a hundred billion dollars worth of copper, silver and gold in it. That would be great if that's all we had high and dry in the Chilean Andes where most of these things have historically been found, developed and mined. But uh, we're not high and dry in the Chilean Andes. We sit beside a river. We have a hydroelectric power scheme which runs just to our east. We're three hours from an international airport on a sealed road. We have two ports down the road, 100 and 150 kilometres away, and uh, two significant population centres at the nation's capital, Quito and Ibarra. So that's going to result in the uh, delivery of a lot of very impressive capex savings to us when we get around to uh, developing this mine. It's got some tremendous uh, logistic and financial advantages uh, as well as of course uh, the grade of the thing. It sits on a mobile belt, it's been reactivated on a few occasions and each of those reactivations has enriched the gold uh, content and uh, that's providing um, a model for very spiky cash flow return at the front end of the development. We own 85% of the project, Cornerstone owns 15%. They will have to contribute once we finish the full feasibility study. And uh, if they don't, uh, they'll dilute to a half percent NSR royalty, which we can buy for three and a half million dollars. So we're in a good position from an ownership and uh, tenure point of view. A little bit about Alpala, the, uh, uh, the, the big discovery that we've made there, that's the Alpala camp early on. It uh, looks considerably more like a metropolis now. Uh, but we have, as a result of using the manned portable rigs supplied by Hubbard Perforacion, he's been able to drill some world record uh, depth holes using a, a manned portable rig down uh, to around about two and a half kilometres. And it's delivered intersections which sit comfortably with some of the world's great uh, intersections associated with uh, some of those um, certainly multi-billion dollar world-class copper and gold uh, porphyry assets that are mined in uh, both northern Chile and also in the southwest Pacific. So uh, it provides you with some uh, contextual evidence uh, for why um, the claim that we uh, have that we're terribly and dangerously undervalued uh, makes so much sense. The high-grade uh, pictures there are, of course, the stuff that we're going to be mining first, and uh, you can also see how that stuff is distributed through uh, the centre parts of the ore body. It's vertically elongate. Uh, our mining plan at the moment uh, looks at uh, basically two lifts. Uh, one is 900 metres high. The one underneath that uh, is going to be about 500 metres high. We'll be looking at a block cave 
uh, mining technique involving about five kilometres of twin declining um, into the, uh, uh, the extraction levels. So this is all subject to review and refinement at the moment as we proceed through the uh, pre-feasibility study which uh, we're working feverishly on and uh, putting a lot of effort at the moment into the location of and securing of uh, uh, tailings disposal sites. As for the PFS we need to be able to demonstrate life of mine uh, tailings disposal options and uh, that's a long time. We can see 55 years life in this project at a 50 million tonne a year underground block caving uh, mining rate. So it's a massive project, but the capital efficiency is very high as a result of um, the great location and the cash flow model um, looks spectacular as a result of the high grades at the front end. So this is um, uh, MRE2. This was uh, released uh, at the end of uh, 2018. Um, it is about to be upgraded using uh, MRE3, which is uh, in prep at the moment and will be independently uh, signed off and certified by uh, our independent uh, resource consultant. As I said, it delivers a very spiky cash flow at the front end. Um, basically, we get four years payback on the total capital expenditure of which about two-thirds will be debt, the way we're planning it at the moment. Um, mercifully, the uh, cost of capital around the world at the moment is a result of a couple of, of, of episodes of quantitative easing by US and other treasuries around the world results in very low capital costs from a, uh, a debt point of view. So with a nice high uh, cash flow profile at the friend, front end, that certainly looks like uh, a very attractive way to finance this uh, development. We're getting a lot of traction with uh, export and import credit agencies who will support the provision on a debt basis of uh, equipment and uh, uh, forward payments on concentrate sales. The concentrates out of this project look spectacular. There's nearly no arsenic, fluorine or other pollutants in the, uh, the concentrate and the grades uh, are very high around uh, between 26 and 28 per cent. Uh, copper with some very high gold credits there. So we've got a lot of interest from concentrate buyers and smelters who will give us um, all of the, uh, the gold uh, as, uh, as a credit. Uh, you can see that in the, uh, in the very high grade uh, start of the mine in the, f in the first 10 years there, um, we're, we're going to be producing, I uh, can't quite uh, read that, but it, it's a lot of copper and a lot of gold. Um, you, can, uh, you can see it, uh, it tails off into the latter part of the mine and one might say, well, well, why are you going to bother with that latter part? It's very important to us to demonstrate to the Ecuadorian government that uh, we're here for a long time and that our philosophy is to maximise the resource utilisation and uh, make sure that we deliver uh, a fair and ongoing set of benefits to the Ecuadorian nation, both its government uh, and its people. That's helping um, them to endorse not just this project but Solgold's presence through the uh, entire nation. How does it look from a global comparison basis? Well, there are two other projects. Um, uh, Sir Robert Friedland's uh, project in uh, the Congo, Kamoa, uh, which is of course very high grade, but it is in the Congo and who knows what's going to happen there. And Pebble, which has been uh, around for an awfully long time. So uh, we maintain that uh, Alpala is the best available copper gold development in the world at the moment and one which is certainly drawing a lot of attention from uh, the world's financiers. That's because of its logistic advantages, it's because of the real uh, interest and push coming from the Ecuadorian government to uh, see a, a rapid and smooth development of this exciting uh, project. So. Um, we're we uh, certainly very happy about how we sit in the global rankings. From an operating cost point of view, we definitely sit in the lowest cost quartile and the, uh, the first uh, uh, 25 years is ridiculously cheap. Um, I don't really care from the first uh, couple of years what people do to the copper price. You can bash it senseless. Um, we're still going to make a profit out of it and it's nice to see the, uh, the gold price kicking along nicely as well. So. Um, you either mine copper here and get gold for free or you mine the gold and get the copper for free. I don't really mind. 
Uh, what are we doing to take it forward? Well, we've got a, um, uh, an armada of uh, globally recognised independent consultants who are overseeing various parts of the uh, pre-feasibility study. It's being uh, headed up by Wood with mining studies being done by uh, Mining Plus, the social and economic impact studies being done by uh, Wood Mackenzie and the resource studies being done by SRK. Uh, Knight Pizold are working on uh, the infrastructure uh, requirements and the uh, tailings dam work and as I mentioned before both Newcrest and BHP provide uh, very uh, valuable gratuitous uh, uh, advice on uh, various, various aspects um, from a technical uh, timing and financial point of view in respect to the development of this project. So uh, we are hoping to get into production in uh, about mid-2025 uh, there'll be about uh, a two to three year uh, build period for the, uh, the initial start-up production which will be at a rate of around about uh, 20, 25 million tonnes a year and then we'll rapidly build that up to uh, 50 million uh, tonnes a year. A little bit about our regional program which uh, sets up this fantastic pipeline that um, uh, we will be spending in the uh, decades to come the surpluses from the Alpala operation. So the Alpala operation will repay capital, uh, especially the debt capital up front, then we'll be sticking the stuff away in the bank. Um, that will easily fund the development of each new successive porphyry copper gold mine as we go down through uh, the uh, Ecuadorian section of the Andean copper belt. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about these. In 2014, after we uh, discovered Alpala, we asked ourselves the question, how likely is it that Alpala is the only one or the best one in Ecuador? And the answer to that, of course, there's no chance at all. Uh, so there must be others. Uh, and we identified the key geological controls at Alpala, which uh, uh, we believe were the reason why it was there and why it was so rich, and uh, found... Uh, uh, 14 other locations where those controls were replicated throughout the country uh, based on a couple of uh, 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 geological and geophysical features, uh, which I don't want to go into. But um, we've got 75 granted uh, tenements over these, uh, these locations at the moment. Um, there are more applications that we have in there over additional targets as well. And uh, we are hoping that in the not too distant future, the Ecuadorian government will open up the uh, cadaster again and get those uh, tenements granted to us. No amount of exploration effort is too much for the Sol Gold team. We have 86 geologists at the moment. They're all deployed in the field, either at uh, Cascabel or uh, regionally through our four subsidiaries, uh, other projects on these 14 other targets. And uh, we have put some announcements out recently which indicate some spectacular surface results from Rio Amarillo in the Carnegie Ridge subsidiary up in the north and the Porvenir project in uh, Green Rock Resources down in the, uh, the southern part of the country. So uh, we're rapidly coming up with some spectacular drilling targets. Uh, also the Selen project in the Cisne uh, Loja group of, of uh, tenements um, we've happily been able to create a blueprint for the exploration for and discovery of these uh, projects or th this mineralisation style in the ore bodies at Alpala and we're applying that like a cookie cutter from a geological and operational and a social point of view all through Ecuador. Other companies have to reinvent an understanding of the geology, the operating environment, the regulatory environment and the social environment um, as they take on new projects. The great advantage that we have is that it's all pretty much the same and we can therefore get into uh, new project areas that we own 100% of very rapidly and very efficiently. Uh, Rio Amarillo is one that we've recently put uh, announcements out on. The litho cap here is bigger uh, than the litho cap at Alpala. The Alpala litho cap was six square kilometres. This one is even bigger and we've so far identified four different uh, porphyry systems with uh, significant copper and gold mineralisation that um, sit underneath that cap around the edges of it. There are probably more underneath the centre. Uh, we've got a lot of drilling 
uh, planned here. It's only 30 kilometres from uh, Cascabel and we'll be able to use the uh, Casab Cascabel uh, operational base as a base for uh, Rio Amarillo exploration. At Timbaro, again, some, some high-grade uh, gold and copper intersections uh, in mineralised systems on the edge of porphyry systems at uh, Timbara only just announced them uh, and we've got a lot of drilling to do there. Same at uh, Port Veneer where we have a 148 metre intersection in a rock saw sample in, in a, a creek through an outcropping porphyry system there. It's exposed at a higher level than it, it, than it is at Alpala. Um, that presents us with uh, uh, a number of other mining options as well as uh, block caving. I might add that block caving is something that we're very happy with in this country because it means that um, you don't have big waste dumps and uh, acid mine drainage problems which create all sorts of environmental and social issues and you don't want to burden a new mining nation with, uh, with those sorts of problems. So uh, we're ready to go at Porvenia, uh, at uh, Rio Amarillo, uh, Timbara and, uh, and the Selen project when we get the, the water permits down here. There's a uh, you'll see that group of purple coloured uh, uh, samples down on the eastern side of Salan. It's a, 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 a 1.4 kilometre long, 700 metre wide zone that has only high grade outcrops in it. Uh, and it's something that we're terribly excited about and really looking forward to uh, drilling La Hueca. Uh, we're nearly ready to drill that as well. La, La Hueca target six over on the western side of the um, the uh, set of porphyry anomalies there is something which is very, very coherent and presents the same opportunity as we saw at Alpala for the discovery of a multi-billion tonne uh, mineralised copper gold system. It's very important these days that, uh, uh, that, that companies, instead of just giving lip service to the, the notion of uh, social licence to operate, you actually practise it. Um, uh, it's no good just having a, an exploration or a mining licence uh, and the tenure. You actually have to have access to the ground. You can't get access to the ground uh, without having the local people, um, the families, the communities, the, the towns, the provincial governments and so on, all endorsing you. We have a fantastic team in Solgold which has been working hard on establishing those relationships all through the country and that has resulted in uh, very, very smooth access to uh, nearly all of the locations that, uh, that we go to. Some take a little bit longer, some have been corrupted by um, unwanted uh, NGO activity, but we're bringing them around and we're, we're running a campaign through Ecuador at the moment that um, advertises the great relationships and the, the jobs and the opportunities that we've created uh, around the Cascabel project. So by getting the endorsement of the local communities, we create a social and an economic cordon around all of our uh, operational centres um, through the country. Uh, we focus uh, intently on making sure that we have a safe workplace. Uh, the worst incident that we've had in uh, 250 kilometres of drilling at Alpala is a cut finger. Um, that's uh, a nearly indefensible um, situation and one that we go, and go on putting more and more effort into uh, to make sure that we, uh, that we maintain a safe operating environment. Uh, we take good care of the environment. We've been at the forefront of developing uh, quite a number of new water management systems around the drilling programs uh, in the, uh, in, in the uh, environment. And uh, we spend a lot of uh, money on uh, plant nurseries, fish farms, uh, chicken farms, uh, cocoa and coffee plantations, fruit plantations and orchards. And we create these opportunities for the local community uh, without economic interest in them. And, uh, and we're very happy that it's helping the local communities to uh, be proud of their involvement with, uh, with Solgold. We have a number of community projects um, that in addition to the ones that I just mentioned include uh, bakeries and um, educational and health support uh, at local schools and, um, and medical centres as well. So we're trying to get uh, positively involved and un unobtrusively involved in uh, all of the aspects of community around the Alpala project 
uh, and we aim to replicate that using the model that we've created throughout uh, all of our projects. Um, we're, we're religious about the health and safety aspects, as I mentioned. Um, these meetings, toolbox meetings, and uh, building a great uh, protective team environment is something that we're very strong on uh, at Alpala. And uh, again, we'll be replicating those standards right throughout all of our projects in the company. So we have um, wrapped around these great assets a company with a market cap of uh, just $470 million uh, US on uh, about 2 billion shares out. Uh, we have uh, BHP and Newcrest as two of our largest shareholders. They're very attracted to not just Alpala, but a whole of country strategy. And uh, our uh, listed company in Australia, DGR Global, also holds a significant position. So um, one might wonder what BHP and Newcrest intend for the future. Um, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to work that out, but it's our intent to uh, maintain control of uh, this company and continue to add uh, value uh, and have it recognised in the equities market um, as we go forward. Because if we can get this project into development, and that's certainly our intention, um, then the rest will be hopefully much smoother sailing because of that spiky cash flow at the beginning of the Alpala project. I've got a great uh, supportive board, particularly uh, Craig Jones, who's the Newcrest appointed um, uh, internationally experienced uh, uh, block cave mining expert. He's right behind uh, the, the mining method that we're planning here. And um, most importantly, uh, Jason Ward, who's uh, also on the board, is an executive director and in charge of everything that goes on in Ecuador. He's a remote operations specialist and he uh, has really been responsible for, uh, for building this project so magnificently. Uh, Steve Garwin on his right is our technical genius who led us to um, uh, led us in, into uh, uh, the Eastern Pacific along with our then uh, uh, managing director uh, back in 2011. And uh, Santiago Vaca there, second from the right, uh, collects all of the data and beside him on, on his left is Ben Whistler who uh, manages all the data and Eduardo Valenzuela uh, is in charge of uh, studies and uh, he's coordinating, pulling all of these uh, uh, disparate experts into uh, a cohesive pre-feasibility study which uh, uh, we are uh, working feverishly on and uh, uh, on a number of different challenging aspects there. So um, it's an exciting company, Sol Gold. Um, our project is Ecuador. Our project is not just Alpala, it's the whole nation. Alpala just happens to be uh, the first of many world-class uh, projects that we intend to uh, develop in, uh, in Ecuador. So thank you very much for coming to hear our talk. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm uh, certainly happy uh, to answer them. Thank you.